I mean, I, I know I've just read the title, but exactly <laughs> what does it entail? What do you do? Well, I, I'm responsible for UNDP's uh, democratic governance program. So I work with 135 countries across, across five regions. And we deal with um, inclusive participation that ranges on, deals with everything from electoral assistance to parliaments to e-governance to civil society work. Responsive institutions, which is public admin reform, local governance, urbanization, access to justice, rule of law, governance assessments, and then thirdly, looking at what we call international principles. So we uh, look at having a human rights approach to development, which means we don't only look at civil and political rights, but socioeconomic rights, work with national human rights institutions across the world, uh, support them, uh, give support for the Universal Periodic mm -hmm. Review and so on. And then also looking at anti-corruption and working very closely on the implementation on the UN Convention Against Corruption. Okay. And that's just a snapshot of, of what of it the, is. It yeah. sounds like a very wide uh, operating area, as it were. The, these countries, are they mainly developing countries? Yes, and, and here it's from, uh, you know, when you look at uh, what was uh, formerly Eastern Europe and the CIS states, it's the Asia Pacific region, it's Africa, it's the Arab states, and Latin America okay. and the Caribbean. Now, we're talking about uh, the discussion on the future global framework post-2015. That's right. So is there a framework that is already in place that is now being put on the table for people to engage about? You know, um, you've just indicated what the Millennium Development Goals yes. were all about. And what we're looking at is a new development framework that takes into account the current global reality. As we all aware, um, what is constant right now is volatility. Okay. Whether it is environmental, whether we're looking at, uh, you know, the whole economic financial crisis, inequalities, all these things have come to the fore. And what this post-2015 agenda is about is having a conversation with people okay. about the future we want to see. Is this the future without the Millennium Development Goals? Is this the future having arrived at some kind of, I mean, with goal number one, eradicate extreme poverty and hunger? It won't be without it because okay. we've still got to work on that. Yeah. You know, I mean, South Africa may have fared fairly well on this. Okay. But I think when we look at the rest of the world, the reality is still about that. I mean, you look at universal primary education. Yes. As uh, we reflect on this, on the my world uh, uh, um, polling that has been done, primary education has come as the highest. Okay. You know, where people see that as the greatest priority. But that's been followed with governance. Okay. Where there's the whole issue where people want to ensure that there is accountable uh, governance, where they have sound service yeah. delivery and all. So this is important. Promoting gender equality and empowering women, yes. I think we see that as a major priority throughout the world. It hasn't been achieved yet. It's got to be taken forward. So what is it that we should do better? And then reducing child mortality. We've got to walk that path yeah. a lot further. Are um, we, I mean, so, so the goals are here. They've yes. been communicated extensively. The framework as it stands now and the framework post-2015, are you getting a sense that there is rapid progress that's being made? Are you getting the sense there's a lot of work still to be done? There's a mixed review. There okay. has been a major progress, and especially when it comes to the whole issue of halving poverty, we've seen that. But within countries and in regions, you, we need to be careful of what's called the tyranny of averages. Okay. Because where you see an average of uh, things being having fared well, yeah. the reality is that the change hasn't been completely felt for all people. Mm -hmm. You have the rural-urban divide. You have growing urbanization, increasing slums in, in instances. Yeah. And we need to see how we deal with those challenges and hence, at the consultation that will take place in Midrand at the Pan-African Parliament on Thursday and Friday, we're actually having four people from the Slum Dwellers okay. Association. So they're coming, and they're going to come and raise the issues that are realities for them. 
and, and we need to ensure that the sustainable development goals, if that's what they're going to be, takes into account what's come with and through the Millennium Development okay. Goals, but needs to look at how to build on it. So Thursday and Friday discussion, and then what comes out of the discussion? What do you then do with what comes from there? The discussion's outcome will be submitted to the high-level panel of the Secretary General of the United Nations. Okay. And you know from Africa, we've got President Alan Sirleaf Johnson, who serves on that panel. Okay. They are compiling, compiling a final report. As a matter of fact, they're busy drafting that report right now. So we're just eating it, you know, because they hope to have their first draft by mid-March. Okay. And that goes to the SG4E's consideration. Post that, there's also the open working group and, of course, the intergovernmental process okay. where the various member states will debate what the development framework will be for the future. But the peoples of the world would have been engaged in the in conversation. The All right. Thank you very much. Geraldine Fraser Muleke joining us this morning, working as a director for governance, uh, for democratic governance practice in the United Nations Development Program. So the discussions on Thursday and Friday at Galagaza State. That's right. Uh, and here this, in Johannesburg. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you very much.